Prognosis, a podcast with Armon Re. Welcome everyone. This is Prognosis, episode seven. And this time we have with us a guest, uh, Linda Curtis, whom I've uh, met um, actually at my YouTube channel, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, she commented there with very interesting comments. And later on, I found her um, over at uh, Discord chats and also IPS and so on. Uh, and I know for a fact that she has a lot of uh, wisdom to share, so I invited her. Uh, welcome, Linda. Thanks for having me, Armin. I'm a little intimidated because you're so much more knowledgeable in so many things than I am. That, that, that is not true, or at least it's uh, debatable. At least it's debatable. <laughs> <laughs> But but anyway, Linda. So let, let's start there. Um, how did how did we meet? Um, you started uh, by commenting on on a few of my YouTube videos, wasn't that uh, right? Yeah, and I think I found you through IPS back in the day because you you were interviewed by him, mm. and I liked what you had to say. So therefore, I went and found your YouTube. So I think that's that's where it began. Nice. And then we met uh, over at uh, several Discord uh, servers and had very yep. interesting uh, chats since then. Yep, a lot of great chats. Yeah. So, okay, Linda. That's where one, we of, are. one of the things that um, uh, we usually talk about, and I know that this is um, a very a key point to you and actually to me as well, and I think that we have a similar view on that um, is this relationship between the internal space and the external space. Uh, of course, at a physical level, but also um, on the you know different layers that this can be read. Um, would you like to go into that? What is your, um, your vision on this? And uh, we can start talking about that topic. How do you say? That's, yeah, that's a, a deep topic because it can go a lot of different ways, right? Because yeah. I think, I think your internal space, your, your mind, um, when you learn somewhat to maneuver that, right? I think it completely affects your outer space. Yes. And I'm not saying you can conjure things up and that that sort of stuff or whatever, but. I'm just saying, like, when you're at peace within, it seems like the world is at peace with you. If that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, it does. And it, it seems to be more, instead of concrete um, reality creation, because there are certain rules and boundaries that uh, we all have to abide by in, in the actual reality, in the objective reality, let's, let's call it that. Um, so it seems to be more like the color uh, with which we interact with reality and reality interacts with us. W would you say that is more accurate? Yep. Yep, I would agree with that. Yeah. And, and I, I think um, the way the world reacts to you regardless, it, it just gives you bits and pieces at times if just to wake you back up. To say, hey, yeah. if you pay attention, I'm here. Yeah, it's uh, it's sort of links, and that's that's why it's um, it's one of the points that um, you know touched me the the most is because it sort of links with um, my observations on the shadows and reflections, right? In the sense that um, I view reality as um, a sort of reflection of the aspects that the self um, is either unable to see or unwilling to see. And so 
this puts us, of course, in a sort of journey of self-discovery um, that is basically an un, sort of undressing of all the, the falsehood, right? And to do that, it is through, it seems to me, and again, of course, it's just my view, um, it seems to me that it's done through that uh, reflection, through the interaction with that reflection uh, that is cast upon us. So, in a sense, we are seeing ourselves in a mirror in reality. And of course, this is not 100% accurate because not every single thing is a reflection. But the most important things, and certainly the color, uh, as we used metaphorically just now, the color of how we see the world uh, is certainly uh, a reflection um, of, of ourselves um, in, in our innermost, right? Right. And yes, and I, I think the entirety of reality, like the trees and the birds and everything else, is also a reflection. I mean, mm -hmm. you can see a bird chirping and relate it to yourself talking. It, I mean, everything is related, in, in my opinion. And it always is pointing back to yourself to look at yourself and figure yourself out and see how you fit into this entire big humongous round that we live in and how everything works together regardless of if you see it as a negative thing. So it would be equivalent with, for example, and this is used merely as an example for, for the conversation, of a vision that reality is a sort of spiritual dream made material. Um, so in that sense, when we have a dream, for example, if we dream of, like you were saying, birds and trees and whatever, um, those are projected by us into the dream. So no one else is creating that dream for us. It comes from us. And it is reflected onto the dream. So there is a part of us that is a bird, that is a tree, etc. And so it reflects onto a, a, an actual dream that we're having. And if we transpose this idea, at least, into the physical reality, um, then if that is correct, if that is in any way accurate, it would also imply, like you said, that... Uh, we are also projecting those um, those birds uh, and trees and so on, right? Right. And yeah, like like I said, it's a big topic. And, and um, I was in a chat yesterday, um, and we kind of went deeper into this because we were talking about space and the way it's presented to us through the media, right? Mm -hmm. And now. They're presenting us with um, nanotech, right? Which is just a very, very small version of, well, we don't even know it exists, right? But right. Yeah. it's the it, image of it. Yeah. The image of it. Mm -hmm. But it's basically sort of the same story because outer space is inner space. They're both related. And it, it's like they're trying to um make us think that they can get so far in our inner space that they can control it and i think the whole concept of that is we have to get so far into our inner space that we control it yes instead instead of projecting it out onto the world for the world to control it that sort of thing no. It just occurred to me one one uh, one interesting thing as as you were saying that, and it's something that I've heard you several times before mention, but it never occurred to me this connection, um, which is space is uh, defined, and I'm talking about outer space is defined by science as being a vacuum, right? So uh, an emptiness, and. It's interesting how it now just linked back with the idea of the Eastern philosophies, namely, uh, for example, Buddhism, 
that says that we should aspire to uh, nirvana, nibbana, which is emptiness. <laughs> you see that? that this, is, yeah. this has actually yeah. never occurred. Uh, never occurred to me. So they, they want to force, perhaps, and uh, this would explain, and as you know, I've been heavily involved with Buddhism um, uh, in the past. Um, and it seems that that connection it, it makes sense that uh, they, at the same time that they sell space as, you know, the physical nothingness, let's say, they start selling um, Buddhism and other Eastern philosophies that are uh, similar, where they sell uh, the inner vacuum, the inner nothingness. Right. Which, that, that's a really good connection. And like I said, this is where you're more knowledgeable than me because I don't read a lot. So I try to discover it Oh, myself. neither do I. <laughs> neither no. do I. Oh, no. okay. <laughs> Silas is the reader. No, not me. Silas, you know, when, when Silas, as you know, he visited um, recently. And one yeah. running joke that we have among ourselves is that he's the scholar and I'm the philosopher. So he's the guy that, that reads and really knows his stuff uh, in that regard. The, acad the academic uh, point of view, let's say. Um, and I'm the philosopher. I'm the guy that you know comes up afterwards and just <laughs> tries to uh, tries to make any uh, uh, connections with it uh, in a different way. Uh, so we sort of make a team in that regard, right? But but no, I don't read uh, a lot either. Um, it's it's um, you know I, I prefer to use my intuition mostly, um, and I think that you're. Uh, similar in that uh, in that regard, right? Yes, and and I think continuing with this idea of inner uh -huh. space, I, I think science is also taking the aspect of outer space and bringing it to inner space with the smaller and smaller and smaller molecules and nano particles and virtual particles and everything else, things that they can't see, right? right? And so when you look at yourself, those little parts of yourself is still what you can't see. Either because you don't want to or because you don't want to or, or you haven't gotten that far yeah. inside possibly. Yeah. Could this link, could that idea link, and this is another inspiring connection that I got just now, could that also link with the several ideas of panspermia that science also holds? Um, which is, if you're not familiar with it, it's um, like, you know, bits of pollen and seeds and, um, you know, genetic material supposedly floats in space until it finally lands in a suitable planet and populates that planet with uh, those species. Um, could that be linked with this idea of a nano thing that you don't see, and of course you can't even therefore prove, and you know, all, all the things that we uh, usually talk about, that, uh, that nothing of this is, is proven or provable, but uh, could that be linked, the same idea that you have in inner space, sort of seeds or pollen or that kind of thing, um, that then regulates your inner behavior when it lands on your own Earth, let's say. Um, and that could be linked with the outer space idea of panspermia, which is that, for example, Earth was populated by, you know, um, seeds and you know uh, um, sorts of uh, genetic material from elsewhere uh, that wasn't seen or wasn't uh, even visible 